Hi, this is Coach Danny at PaperStayDraining.com. Welcome back to my channel, Running Wild. And today's training talk is hopefully it'll be about a relevant topic to a lot of people right now, which is base phase training and adding in some of those first few weeks of speed workouts and everything I consider as a coach. So base phase training, one of the biggest things is always safely building mileage and so just slowly like building it up. Now some people you may have maintained a pretty good base um, during the off season so it might just be just hiring mileage a little bit. Some people you're starting from zero then yeah you definitely have to spend more time maybe just building up um, just some base miles before you do anything. Now there are a lot of people where after like a, just a couple of weeks of running easy mileage, you can already start adding in speed workouts. For some people, you might be add, able to add in strides right away. So I think strides are a really good place to start. Now, I do think it's, I do think you have to be careful with how you introduce strides, or at least that's how I do it with my runners. I am pretty careful with my wording. Uh, if somebody hasn't done any speed work, any strides for, for more than a couple of weeks, normally, or even if it's just after a race, I'll say, you know, really ease into the strides and do not confuse the word stride with the word sprint because that's not what a stride is, definitely not a sprint. So um, for some people, uh, I will even say just instead of thinking of like 20 second strides, do like 20 second surges where all you're trying to do is start moving your legs a little bit faster than what you've been doing recently. Uh, so normally I do, I'll start with strides, um, again, wording carefully, just two to three times a week, spaced out, see how somebody responds. If all is well, then you know you can start adding in some different stuff. And now this is uh, where my philosophy really varies with the people that I'm coaching. Um, but you know, typically I do start off the first few like speed workouts back are all pretty much fart licks. And, you know, I know I'm not the only coach who's done this. And when I took the Lydiard coaching certification and you know, a lot of the, some of the training books I read or I know like a lot of other professional um, track and distance programs, they all start off with fart licks. Um, generally because uh, you don't have to worry about pace right at the back so people aren't doing more speed than the, they're ready for it. And you can really just hone in on how your body's feeling um, and just making sure you're putting good speed or good form before you put speed. Um, so yeah, again, good form before speed. That's typically something I always say as my runners start adding in speed workouts, speed workouts, good form before speed. Um, and it's also just kind of a nice way to like mentally get your mind back in too. And so for the first um, few fart licks, I'll typically just say like all I'm trying to get you to do is move your legs faster than what you've been doing. Kind of like similar to the strides, but a little different. It's a different workout. Uh, but I will change up the strides depending on the runner. For some people, I will start off with pretty like short intervals for the fart like with, with the longer rest because I think they can go faster off the bat. They're not injury prone. They might already have a pretty solid base just from their off season. They're feeling really good. So it could be something like 10 to 15 times 30 seconds fast, 90 seconds easy, or 10 times, 10 to 12 times one minute fast, one minute easy. Um, but again, I will, I will be careful with my wording. I'll say ease into it. If you feel good, go faster from there, but make sure you don't turn it into like a really hard workout. Now for, now for other runners, I will still do fart licks, but I will, play around with the length of the interval and the far look and the recovery. Uh, so somebody's typically more injury prone or I think they actually need to add in more tempo-like efforts right away. Um, the far like intervals might be more from like three to eight minutes and maybe a shorter recovery just to prevent them from going too fast. And so um, start from there. So again, these are two different approaches uh, really depending on the runners. So I, again, I'm factoring in things like where, how much base building the person's already done, how many email, easy miles they ran in the off season, the injury prone, what do they take their response to best, uh, what do I think is going to help them the most right now, what race are they training for, just so a lot of things are coming into play when I'm designing this first part of somebody's training cycle. Quick ad here, um, some of the reason why I do like adding in the shorter intervals for the people who can handle it first, 
is because they really build up a lot of speed right away. And so when we do start focusing on longer tempos, they are already so much faster at doing those tempos than they would be if you would have started off tempos for that individual. But on the other hand, for some people, like they are really good at doing the short intervals and hitting the fast paces, but really struggle with doing the longer tempos. And so for that person, it could be much more beneficial to start off with the tempos and really starting to focus on on that and getting all the benefits you can get from like more like lactate threshold type workouts and then hitting the speed which they're already good at and just really tapping out their speed before the race doing that but um really just honing on the base phase here of course as you get close to the race workout should get more specific but it's always i think it's always good to add in a variety of workouts so okay back to the rest of the training talk so extending on that further once i feel good that somebody's body is handling the forelegs pretty well um, for some people, especially uh, my road and track runners, uh, a lot of them can respond really well to doing some hill work early on. Now, this isn't long hill work. It's, it's normally a short um, interval. Sometimes it could be as short as six times one minute or um, eight times 30 seconds. Again, they do have some durability from the fartleks and strides they've already done. But I like this because it builds just a lot of strength right away. And a lot of, um, I've had, had a few people tell me like, oh, they really feel it in their glutes. And so that's a big reason why I like the whole workout. So I feel like it gets people really engaging their glutes and build up a lot of strength there. And then, you know, a few weeks down the road when you start doing um, more road and track sessions that they already have that power and so now it's just about transferring that power over to the flat stuff. So again, I do like to add in a variety of different workouts right off the bat. I'm not only having somebody do strides or, or hill repeats or short um, fart like intervals and I'm always paying attention to how somebody responds and how I need to space these, work, these workouts for somebody in the future. And um, you know, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is critical velocity workouts, which um, I won't touch too much on because my partner Sage recently did a video. Um, so I'll link that in the description below or, or somewhere. Um, and I do like those workouts a lot because they can build uh, speed pretty well, um, pretty fast. And it's also broken up, the same with same with Farlex. They're broken up, which I feel like breaking up workouts uh, right at the beginning of the training cycle can be beneficial just because it allows somebody to, like even just like a minute or, or longer to reset and make sure they're make sure they're holding good form um yeah and just because the last thing we really want to avoid during this period is having somebody do too much too soon not only too fast just too long and their body breaking down um because they're not ready for the workout and then they're just picking up bad form form habits. So that's something you really want to avoid during this base phase. Uh, what else? But just to clarify, uh, you know, I use a lot of different training approaches. I've looked, uh, have, Sage and I, we have so many training books. I've also taken um, different coaching certifications and, you know, I just love learning about different people's training philosophies. And because of that, I feel like I'm good at honing in and what each individual needs and of just having, oh, this worked for me. I'm going to apply it to all my runners. Like that's not, that's not how individualized coaching works. So I know it's a lot to take in. And if you're thinking about how to apply this to yourself, um, it, it can be tricky. And so I think some experimenting needs to come into play and to be open that and just really paying attention to how your body's feeling. But I think the key takeaways are, is one, you know, make sure you have a somewhat decent mileage base for you. Um, it doesn't have to be like what you're going to max out for mileage for that training cycle before you start doing speed workouts. You definitely don't have to do that. Um, and again, just start off with strides or uh, as I like to say, like just little pickups, see how your body responds and go from there. And then, you know, consider your background, how injury prone are you? What are you training for? What do you typically respond to best? And so then just, I again, like I like to add in fart licks without pace at first, just kind of run by feel, don't be glued to your watch so you're not doing too much too soon. Um, and then just 
seeing how long your body takes to respond and adapt to these different these different stimulus. So, you know, for some people, you might be able to try like 30 second, um, 30 second intervals, again, not by pace and just seeing how your body responds. And then later in the week going up to like something like I don't know, two times eight minutes or three times eight minutes more to tempo effort and see how your body responds to that. Or, you know, if you're typically a fast twitch um, muscle fiber person or uh, seem to be pretty durable, you can get a pretty good strength and um, speed boost by just doing some hill repeats right away. Uh, but again, just be careful and really be thoughtful about who you are as a runner and what you need to work on right now. So um, I know that can be a lot for somebody to take in, uh, but you know, experiment and you'll figure it out. It takes time, but just trust yourself. But the key is really thinking about who you are and how you typically respond. So that's it. Um, about base phase. Uh, oh, I do want to say, like, be careful about how you space your workouts during the base phase. I always give two to three days recovery during the base phase. Um, later on, I know some people will really change it up from there, but uh, just typically during that building phase, especially if you're building mileage and speed workouts at once, uh, you really have to be careful with the spacing things. And please, 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 this is a good time of the year to make sure you're taking your easy runs easy enough. Uh, can't stress that enough. Like, just don't even bother looking at your watch um, unless you really like need that to hold yourself accountable, slow down. But really just make sure the effort's easy. And if you're a little bit tired, make sure you're keeping good form and just work on all the little things you need to as, as you're building up and maybe still keeping runs some shorter so you can just work on what's really going to help you the most and keep you strong later in the year. So that's my little talk on base phase training and adding in some speed workouts. If you have any questions, just let me know below. Whenever I get done with these talks, I always like just think of everything I should have said to help clarify things for people. So don't be afraid to ask questions below. Um, always happy to help, or at least I try to with everything else I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's it. that's it for the training talk. Uh, if you like this and want more, please subscribe and like this video and you know give me ideas for the future. And also, if you're in any surface, any distance runner, just like this shirt, uh, Sage and I are now selling those on our website, sagerunning.com. Hate plugging stuff, but I did want to throw that out there in case you were curious. So till next time, keep running wild.